In this problem, an automobile is traveling on a straight road for 40 kilometers at 30 kilometers per hour, and then it speeds up to 60 kilometers per hour and travels at that speed for 40 more kilometers. Part A asks us to calculate the average velocity of the car during the full 80 kilometer trip. As usual, our average velocity formula is equal to the distance traveled, or I'll call that uh, delta x here, divided by the time elapsed over that motion. Now we have the total amount of time traveled throughout this motion. It's given to us in the problem as 80 kilometers, because 40 plus 40 is 80 kilometers. But we're still missing the time. So to find the time, the total time throughout this motion, uh, let's break it up into segments just as I have here when I've set these uh, delta x sub 1, v sub 1, v sub 2, delta x sub 2 variables. Uh, setting variables and labeling them with subscripts representing each part of the motion can really help a lot in visualizing how this whole problem is going down. So all we're missing is to find uh, t sub 1 and t sub 2 the time for each segment of the motion. As we've established before, the time of a motion is equal to uh, a distance traveled divided by the speed. So we'll want to calculate this for each segment of the automobile's motion. So for t sub 1, for instance, this is equal to the change in position uh, in the first part of the problem. So 40 kilometers divided by uh, v sub 1 the speed at that part, so 30 kilometers per hour. And this is equal to about 1.33 hours. Now for T sub 2, we'll use the same process, basically. It's going to be equal to 40 kilometers, the uh, t, uh, D sub 2, divided by V sub 2, the speed for the second part, so 60 kilometers per hour, which is equal to about 0 0.67 hours. So now we know that the change in position x is equal to 80 kilometers, and we can also figure out from what we've just calculated that the change in time, delta t, is equal to the sum of t sub 1 and t sub 2, so 1.33 hours plus 0 0.67 hours, which is equal to 2.00 hours. Now let's actually calculate the average velocity. And so the average velocity is just going to be equal to 80 kilometers divided by 2 hours, which is going to be 40 kilometers per hour. And that is the average velocity throughout this automobile's motion. Part B of the problem asks us to find the average speed of the automobile's motion. Now remember, that the difference between speed and velocity is that velocity takes into account the direction of the motion or the direction of the automobile while speed is not. Now because we are only dealing with one-dimensional motion here since the automobile is on a straight road this actually is pretty easy because we don't have to worry about uh, different components of the car's vector motion or anything like that. It's just a single direction meaning all we really have to do to make sure that this is a speed is just make, take our velocity and make sure that there are no negative signs, which there aren't anyway. So the average speed of the automobile's motion is just the same as the velocity, just 40 kilometers per hour. Part C of the problem asks us for a graph of change in position uh, versus time and indicate how the average velocity can be found using that graph. And so I have shown that graph here. Uh, so these solid lines represent uh, the actual motion of the automobile in every point of the problem. Uh, so at first it's traveling at its uh, original slower speed of 30 kilometers per hour. And then at the point uh, 1.33 hours, it then uh, starts traveling at 60 kilometers per hour. And I've also represented the distance or change in position over which it travels uh, for each of those segments as well.
the average velocity is represented on this uh, graph with this dashed line uh, that goes from the origin of the graph to the end of its motion. And so when we calculate the average velocity or the average speed, what we're really calculating is the slope of this dashed line. And that is how we can represent uh, the car's motion.